Dead by Steve Lacey. Look at me swooping in to teach you a song that came out five years ago, just in time. There are three parts to this song. Let's learn the first part first. As always, coming in with too much of my, this kind of energy. I just, I need a calm, cool, collected energy. First, first part of the song goes like this. So that strumming, you can see the strumming is just strum, 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 strum. So that's easy. You got that part good. Now let's learn the chords. We go one, two, three, four, five chords. First one, pointer finger on the sixth fret of the E string. Don't use the tip of your finger. Lay it kind of flat like that. You see that? Ring finger plays the eighth fret on the A string. That's the second string from the top. Pinky plays the eighth fret on the third string from the top, the D string. And then your middle finger plays the seventh fret on the G string, that third string from the bottom, like that. Here's where the bad news comes in. I should have told you, there's some bad news. This is a bar chord. This whole flipping song is all bar chords. So if you're new to bar chords, this is going, we're, we're throwing you into the deep end of the bar chord pool. Here's what a bar chord means. It means your pointer finger, I told you to put your pointer finger on the sixth fret of the top string. You also need to smash down your finger so you're pushing on all six strings. So now, if you play through all six strings, bing bong, bing bang, ding dong, you might have some muted notes like this. If that's the case, it's okay, the chord will still sound okay. Just roll with it. Roll with it, it's gonna be fine. But in the meantime, here are a few tips to help you with your bar chord construction. One, keep your thumb back here on the back of the neck. Treat it like you're pinching your thumb and your pointer finger together, like you're trying to crush the neck of the guitar between your thumb and your pointer finger. Here's one more little tip. You don't need to keep your finger perfectly straight and push on every single string, you can have this tiny little arch to your finger because really what we care about is the, the pad of your finger right here, getting the top string and the base of your finger pushing on the bottom couple strings. If the strings like the A, D and G strings are muted, that's fine. As long as we have the top and the two bottom, we're good to go. There are my bar chord tips, but no matter which way you slice it, it's gonna be tough. Okay, we took enough time on this first chord. Let's move on to the second chord. My goal is 12 minutes. I want this to be a 12 minute video. We're going for an even dozen, not a baker's dozen, a dozen minutes in this video. This right here, I'm gonna go ahead and call this, do we wanna call it a B flat minor? A B major? Uh, do we wanna call it a B flat major chord or do we wanna call it an A sharp major. I think we actually, I think we want to call it an A sharp major, which sounds gross, but I think that's, I think that's what I'm going to, I think that's my answer and I'm sticking to it. Strum that chord four times. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to slide your fingers back two frets. So now your pointer finger is on the fourth fret and then ring finger is on the sixth fret of the A string. Pinky's on the sixth fret of the D string. Middle finger fifth fret of the G string. Although that that's what would happen if we just slide this back two frets, but then you actually wanna get rid of your pointer finger so that the G string, your pointer finger is smashing down on the G string on the fourth fret. If you ask me, I think that's really tough to try to smash down on the G string with your pointer finger. So I do what Steve Lacey does, which is my middle finger smashes down on top of my pointer finger. So now I have both of these two fingers smashing down on all six strings on the fourth fret. Now we have this G sharp minor chord. Like that, you're gonna strum that chord four times. The, the string that's gonna give you the hardest time is that third string from the bottom, the G string. When you play it, it might sound like this. You wanna just really smash down, maybe try to get the knuckle of your pointer finger lined up with that string so you can get that note. If you play it and that string is muted, just, just play it like that. It's gonna sound okay, and as you get more and more used to it, you'll be able to hear that note. Okay, great. Boom, 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 bing, bang, bing, bang. 
Then slide back another two frets. So now your pointer finger's on the second fret, ring finger on four, pinky on four, add your middle finger back into the mix. Middle finger's on the third fret of the G string, third string from the bottom. We've got this. It's the same shape as our A sharp major, but now it's an F sharp major. Oh, my sunglasses. M! One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, when you move your fingers around like that, you're gonna notice a lot of the string noise. What I do is when I switch chords, I let these fingers just glide along the string where I'm touching the string the whole time. But my pointer finger does this little hop. I kind of, my pointer finger hops up, lands on the new fret. Hops up, lands on the new fret. So it's like. See that little hop? After you play this chord, our F sharp major four times. One, two, three, four. You're gonna go down to here. It's a yet another bar chord. I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you guys. You can uh, get mad at Steve Lacey for it, not me. I'm just the messenger. Um, don't shoot the messenger. Pointer finger, second fret on the A string, second string from the top, like that. But before we move on with the rest of this chord, I need to tell you the tip of your pointer finger needs to touch the top string. Do you see that? Do you see that? So I'm pushing on the A string, but I'm just touching the E string with the tip of my pointer finger because I want to mute it. We don't want to hear that E string right there. Second fret on the A string. Ring finger plays the fourth fret on the D string, third string from the top. Your pointer finger has to smash down on everything on the second fret once again, but there's some good news. Your middle finger can help. Your middle finger can smash on top of your ring finger and help it smash. Your middle finger can smash down on top of your pointer finger and help get all those strings on the second fret. Pinky plays the fourth fret on the B string, the second string from the bottom. This is a B7 chord. We're gonna strum it twice. This one is a little, it's a little tricky to get to because you don't just have to slide your hand around, you have to switch down to the other strings. It's gonna be a struggle getting there fast enough. Play that twice, then your middle finger abandons its post on the pointer finger and it plays the third fret on the G string, the third string from the bottom. It's a B major seven, you play that twice. That's the whole first section of the song. Let's quickly go through it. We had our A sharp major bar chord four times. Then without skipping a beat, you're gonna move back two frets so you're on the fourth fret. Your middle finger leaves the G string, smashes down onto your pointer finger. Slide back two more frets, put your middle finger back onto the G string. Then you've gotta go down a string or up a string, depending on down towards the floor, up in pitch to this B7 chord. Your middle finger smashes down on your pointer finger. One, two, middle finger goes to the G string on the third fret. One, two. As far as the rhythm goes, I told you it's just bling, blang, bling, blang, bling, blang, bling, blong, just a bunch of strums down. However, it's gonna be so tempting to go like this. It's not gonna fly. We, we can't have any of those gaps between the chords. So here's, here's how you, so here's how you practice switching without big gaps in between the chords. Just slow everything down to an embarrassingly slow tempo and that will buy you a little more time to switch chords. Watch this. some extra time to switch chords, but I'm not interrupting the groove of the song. That's part one. He does that 10,000 times. Just repeats those chords. Oh, one more quick thing. There's no way this video is gonna be 12 minutes. Who am I kidding? You are gonna practice going, playing through those those chords. Great, you can make you go bum, 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 bum. There, I did it, I made it, I did it. Do you know what the hardest transition is in this whole section? It's getting 
from the last chord back to the first chord. So don't neglect that. Don't just play through it once, end on the last chord, be done with it. Play the last chord, then just get right back to the first chord. I'm telling you, practice that part. Practice going from the last chord to the first chord. Oh, and in case I didn't mention it, practice going from the last chord back to the first chord. Part two, this is the easy part. We're gonna take, we have like basically a little break right now. So easy, are you kidding? This is gonna be a walk in the park and a blast from the past. All single notes on the top string, the E, whoa, E string, you're gonna play six, six, five, five, four, four, four. It's so simple. I don't even care if you use three different fingers, if you use just one finger. Sometimes I just use just my pointer finger. Look. I mean, whatever. Great. Six, six, five, five, four, four, four. Then go down to the A string, the second string from the top, and play six, six, four, four. Now for this part, I do recommend you go ring finger, ring finger, pointer finger, pointer finger. You don't have to, but that's what I think is most comfortable. Look. Then Pinky plays seven up on the top two times. And then I use my ring finger, but it doesn't really matter to play six on the top. Is that, is it three times? Three times. So we've got six, six, five, five, four, 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 six, six, four, four, seven, seven, six, six, six. Oh, six, six, six. That's... Halloween was two days ago, so I mean, you know. So that's this part. Here's a four, here's a four times. Then we play some chords. The first he plays he plays this group of chords four times in a row. The first time he does it, he goes like this. So we've got sixth fret up on the top string with the pointer finger. The A string, second string from the top, is muted. Middle finger, sixth fret on the D string, third string from the top. Ring finger, sixth fret on the G string, the string right below that. And then pinky plays the sixth fret on the B string, the second to bottom string. Probably it already automatically happened, but the bottom string, you wanna mute it with your pinky or kind of the base of your pointer finger can mute it. So we've just got. Strum this twice. It's A sharp minor seven chord. Then slide it back one fret to the fifth fret. A minor seven chord, strum that twice. Then go back another fret to the fourth fret. G sharp minor seven chord. Does he play it? How many times does he play it? Three times. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Great. Now, up to a D sharp minor, pointer finger plays the sixth fret on the A string. Ring finger plays the eighth fret on the D string. It's the third string from the top. Pinky plays the eighth fret on the G string, third string from the bottom. Middle finger plays the, uh, you know, the good old the seventh fret, second string from the bottom. Bottom string if you want, your pointer finger can smash down on the bottom string. Or if that bottom string is muted, I don't think anybody cares. I'm listening to the recording by Steve Lacey and I can't tell. I can't tell. This is my god my godfather impression. Oh my god will uh, offer you can't refuse. D sharp minor strums that twice. But I have to break it to you. Sometimes when he's playing the song, he does a little little down up down right there. It's the only part of the song where the rhythm changes up is the whole rest of the song, he's just going down, 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 down. When he gets to this chord, sometimes he just goes down, down. Sometimes he goes down, down. I'll show you how that all sounds as we get through it. We'll just do it twice for now. Down, down. Then, I know, I know, there's more. There's more, I know, there's a lot of chords. Slide it back one, two frets, like that. Get rid of your middle finger. Your middle finger doesn't do anything. Your pinky has to go down from, it's on the G string right now, G string on the sixth fret. You wanna move it down so it's on the sixth fret of the B string, the second string from the bottom. Uh, this chord right here 
is a C sharp major chord. But I'm going to tell you uh, this this chord this is what I this is what I think. I've watched some live videos. I've listened closely. Here's what I think is happening. It looks like a bar chord. It looks like my pointer finger is smashing down on everything, but it's not. I'm pushing on the fourth fret of the A string, muting the E string, and I'm actually, can you tell, I'm not pushing, I'm just touching on these strings right here. So I've just got some muted strings in there. So there's really only three notes we're hearing. We're hearing the A string, the D string, nothing on the G string, and then we're hearing the B string. Those are the three important notes from a C sharp major chord. Barring this right here, if we push down with the pointer finger, we'd end up with a C sharp seven chord, which I don't think is what's going on in the song. And if we wanted to make it into a full on C sharp bar chord, we'd have to do this, this stupid thing where you use your ring finger to play a bunch of strings and nobody likes doing that. And I, I honest to goodness, when I watch the videos of this song live, I don't, th I don't think he's doing that. I think he's just doing this with a couple muted strings. I've noticed, uh, you know who else does that sometimes? Brian May from the band Queen. Have you ever seen Brian May and Steve Lacey in the same room at the same time? Uh, one more, two more chords. How long are we at right now? Seven, <laughs> we're at 17. I can't cut out like five minutes of this. I mean, I know I could because most of what I've said have been, been we're just gonna keep going. We just did this. That guy. Then, pointer finger goes to the seventh fret on the E string. Ring finger plays ninth fret on the next string down. Pinky plays ninth fret on the D string, the next string down. Middle finger, eighth fret on the G string. Use your pointer finger to bar to push on all the strings. Play that twice. Then slide that chord back one fret to the sixth fret. Get rid of your middle finger. Have your middle finger smash down on your pointer finger. Now we have this A sharp minor chord. I forgot to mention to you, this is a B major chord. This A sharp minor. This whole section goes like this. We're almost done. We're almost done, I promise. He does that once. Then he does it three more times, but there's a little difference in the final three times. Instead of him playing the first three chords like this, he plays it like this. So, you know how we ended that song, that part? What, I've lost, this is the part of the video where I just, I know it's ending soon, and I just, my, I emotionally shut down. And I just go, what things did I forget to say? Let me say the last things that I forgot to say. We ended with previous chord, we went. Remember that? Stay on this chord. This is our A sharp minor. Pointer finger on the sixth fret, ring finger on eight, pinky on eight. You're gonna play. So I just played boom, boom, slid it back a fret to the fifth fret. Slid it back another fret to the fourth fret. So it's exactly what we did like this. We just start using this bar chord shape instead. I'll tell you what, I'll play you this part of the song and then we'll then we'll leave. Got it? We're done. <laughs> 